and believe me even if this question sounds very complex after reading it we can actually do this using all the basic concepts that we have learned in this series so far hey guys welcome back to our channel on this channel we try to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions this video is in continuation of the sql 50 crack sql into 50 question series where we are trying to learn hands-on sql using 50 carefully created questions covering diverse aspects of sql so we are already done with the select basic joins basic aggregate functions and sorting and grouping we are currently working on advanced select and joins then we'll be moving to sub queries and finally ending with advanced string functions regex and clauses in this video we are going to solve this question called product price at a given date and try to learn from it so yeah, let's jump right in okay so this is the 34th question of the series called product price at a given date and if you look at the companies this question has been asked in so google and amazon and quite a number of times so kind of an important question let's look at what the question has to say we are given a table called products with three different columns product id new price both of them have data type integers and change date which is a date type the combined columns product id and change date is the primary key that is combination of columns with unique values of this table each row of this table indicates that the price of some product was changed to a new price at some date. Okay. We are asked to write a solution to find the prices of all products on 16th of August 2019. Assume the price of all products before any change is 10. Order of the result does not matter. Okay. Let's go through this example and see what do we need in our output. So here we have certain different products, their new prices and the change date now we need to return for every product id on 16th of august 2019 what was the price so if we look at product id 1 so product id 1 we have three different rows so the price was changed on 14th of august to 20 then on 15th of august to 30 and on 16th of august to 35 so on 16th of august 2019 for product id 1 the price is 35 for two on 14th of August 2019, it was set at 50 and the next change was on 17th of August. So on 16th of August, it is having the same price that was changed to on 14th of August, that is 50. And for product ID 3, the change was made on 18th of August. And since the question says that if there is no change, right, so assume, or assume the price of all products before any change is 10. So for product ID 3 on 16th of August 2019, the price is 10. So that is what we have in our output. Now, in this question, we can use this date as a anchor point. And believe me, even if this question sounds very complex after reading it, we can actually do this using all the basic concepts that we have learned in this series so far. So no advanced methods, ranking, window functions, etc. is needed. But this question is actually going to test every basic concept that we have actually learned in this series. Let's see how we can do that. Okay. So the first thing is, as we said that 16th of August 2019 is the day that we read, need the prices on. So that is an anchor point. So what if our step one in the logic is that for each of these product IDs and the changes from 16th of August 2019, how far they are? Because the closer they are, then we can know that, okay, was there a change around 16th of August 2019? So what I'm saying is, let's say, from this table called products, what I'm doing is let's create another column. So let's keep all the columns that are currently there. So select star and now create another column using the date diff function. So what we are doing is from 2019, that is August of 16. So 16th August 2019, calculate the difference in the change date for every row. And let's alias this as difference let me go ahead and run this and let's see what do we have in our output so here we can see that in our output from 16th of august 2019 this is two days before that again similarly for this two days one days before 16th of august this is 16th of august so zero days before that then minus one basically is one day after 16th of august and two days after 16th of august now this is very important for us because we can use this table to actually solve this now for people who do not know about common table expressions it might sound that i'm going into advanced territory but the thing is what i want to do is i want to have this saved in a particular table whatever the name be but i want to save this in a table so usually the way to do that is you know you can create a temporary table create temp table let's say data as but the problem with this lead codes environment is that it will not allow me to create a temporary table. 
so you see it says like there is check the manual correspondence and all that so it does not allow me so there is another way which is actually using a common table expression so think of common table expression is you do something so you perform all these operations right so all the columns then you call calculated the difference from 16th of august 2019 and just save it into something called data so the syntax for that is why i am doing this is i cannot do that and i can you know still go ahead and do this but the problem is that it will make our code very cumbersome why because we need to use this part use this table a couple of times in this so that will that will make our code repetitive and won't look as good as we want it to be and it won't be clean as well so just bear me with on this so the syntax for common table expression is you start a common table expression with with and whatever name you want to give you can write anything it does not matter so with data as the only thing that you need to keep do is just put whatever you want to be stored in this common table expression called data just put that in parentheses so now if i just go ahead and do let me just go ahead and do select star from data okay now let's see so basically what do we have is whatever we had right so this is the table that we had initially and now this is saved in something called data so just think of this as a table now what we can do is we can proceed okay so now our step two is for every product id we can try to find out what is the minimum difference that is not less than zero because less than zero means so minus one means one day after 16th of august and it does not make any sense for us because we need the price on 16th of august what is happening after 16th of august we do not care about it so on or before 16th of august what is the minimum difference for each of the product id if we can get that and we can say that okay so this is the closest a change was made to a new price for a particular product id okay so how can we do that you can simply go ahead and group by the product id and keep only those rows where your difference is not less than zero and return the minimum difference so what i am saying is from this table called data we are keeping only those rows where difference is greater than zero and then what we are doing is group by the product id group by the product id return the product id so return the product id and get the minimum of the difference so that will tell you the closest day on or before 16th of august 2019 the change was made so let's alias this as minimum difference okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we have in our output okay so for product id 1 0 and for product id 2 2 why how does this make sense so you will see that on for product id 1 the change was made on 16th of august 2019 so obviously that means the minimum the closest change was made on the same day but for product id 2 the closest change was made on two days before 16th of august for product id 3 the change was made after 16th of august and we will take care of those product ids as well do not worry so now what we can do is so let me switch to excel and have that so this was the products table and if i just copy this if i just copy this let me paste it here so this was our data table and then after grouping by and trying to find out the minimum difference we have this so let's save this as d2 which has product id and minimum difference then what we can do is we can use this data table as well as the d2 to join on the product id and say that okay for this product id do we need to use this or do we not need to use this and we will develop the logic on that as well so what i am saying is so this entire thing is basically what we are doing is this is we are calling this as d2 so if i go ahead and alias this as d2 and what i am doing is from the data table so from the data table let me left join this table called d2 on so let me just drag it down on data dot product id is equal to d2 dot product id and let me go ahead and keep all the columns from data table but just we are i am only interested in the minimum difference column from d2 so i am will do d2 dot minimum 
difference okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output let me drag it above so in our output what we have is so this was data so this is basically these numbers are telling you that from 16th of august 2019 how many days they are before or after and then minimum difference is telling you that okay for product id 1 0 means so on 16th of august 2019 there was a change similarly this what is this telling you so two days before 16th of august 2019 there was a change for product id 2 and that was the closest change for product id 2 near 16th of august 2019 and remember for 3 there was no change before that so we have a null here in this case so now once we have this then we can use these two columns to actually get whether this new price is useful for us or not. So what we can do is if this difference is equal to your minimum difference, that means that that was the latest price for that product. So for example, 0 and 0. So 16th of August 2019, 1 for product ID 1, this is the latest change. And obviously this 35 is what we need in our output. So this is useful for us. But for product ID 1, all changes made on 14th and 15th does not make any sense. So this is not equal to this. Minimum difference is not equal to difference. So what we can do is we can say, okay, your price is zero. And in these cases, when you are not able, because this is not an integer. So SQL won't be able to compare these cases. So you just let it be null. So what I'm saying is, let's use a case when statements. So case when statements are same as if statements. So case when is basically if else statement if we think about in the logical sense. So if something is true, return this. If something else is true, return something else. And if nothing is true, return whatever is your default value or something like that. So what we can do is, we can use the case when statements here. So what I'm doing is, use case when your so when your difference is equal to minimum difference so that means that price is helpful for us so difference is coming from data table and minimum difference is coming from this d2 so case when data dot difference is equal to d2 dot minimum difference then new price is helpful and useful for us when data dot difference is not equal to d2 dot minimum difference then we can just simply say zero because that price is not useful for us and the third case would be the sql is not able to compare these two columns so else we can simply go ahead and say okay let it be null we will deal with it later else and since we started whenever you start a case when statement you always need to end that and then you can also alias this so what is the name of the column that you want you can say like price or whatever that does not matter okay let me go ahead and run this let's see whether we are we get our output okay so now we have a table let me drag it to the left so that it's easier for us okay so now what we have is so here it was not equal and obviously the price is zero what does this sim simply mean that hey for product id1 there was a change on 16th of august so a change made or a price on 14th of august does not have any value for me similarly for 15th of august does not have any value for me but on 16th of august since the change was made so this price is valuable for me and this is the price for product id 1 on 16th of august similarly for product id 2 one change was made on 14th of august 2019 so yes and that is the closest because after that the change was made after 16th of august and after 16th of august i do not care about that because that does not make any sense to me for in this question so you see now you have this and here you are not able to compare so leave it now does not matter to us okay once we are clear with this then think about it how can we do this because in our output for every product we need the price ads on 16th of august and we have been using 16th of august 2019 as a anchor so think about it the reason for us to do zeros here is just if you group by the product id and sum this you can get the price so what i'm saying is let me go ahead and use this entire so this entire thing right so this is what we got so this is entire table that we have and we can use this table so what i'm doing is from so from this entire thing that we got right now and let me alias this as what capital t table t 
what i am doing is group by group by t dot product id and then what i am doing is return t dot product id and do a sum of price column so t dot price and let me alias this as price okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output okay so now in our output we have for product id 1 it was 35 50 and for 3 null okay we will be doing dealing with this because there is a small fix with this but actually if you look compare with our expected output for product id 1 and 2 we are getting what is required in our output okay let me switch to excel and try to recap what we have done so far so here we had difference this is your data using this d2 what we did was we populated this minimum difference so for minimum difference now what we did was we used case when statements to get the price column and said that whether this price was useful for me then what we did was we grouped by the product and summed the price column so if you just look at product id 1 so product id 1 is column this and these two so 0 plus 0 plus 35 so that is what we have in our output that 35 for product id 2 we have so product id 2 is 50 plus 0 so 50 and for 3 sum of null is returning us null but if it is returning null what does that signify it signifies that there has been no change on or before 16th of august and therefore in those conditions we need to return 10 as the price of that product so remember we used if null that if something is coming out to be null you can replace it with something else so it's you see you can do that so let me just drag it down so sum this entire thing and if it is coming out to be null so if null so you sum the stuff if it is coming out to be null replace it with the value 10 let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output so now if you see this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases and this is accepted and this is how we did so yes very tricky question very complex question we have to think through this a lot but if you are following this series and learning the very basics of sql and how it operates we can actually do this without using any fancy sql window functions etc now if you know that actually you can do this in even concise method and when we will be learning about those window functions we will try to do questions using that as well but you see here we have not used any advanced stuff we learned about all these joins etc if null sum group by calculating the difference etc so yeah this is how we do it let me know if there's a better way or more efficient way to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and i will see you guys in the next video